I'd like to show you some interesting connections between why you may develop gallstones or have gallbladder problems and its relationship to the thyroid, okay? Or if you have a hypothyroid problem, how that could relate to your gallbladder and bile salts. I really wish it was easier to find these connections uh, when you do your research on these topics, but it's been difficult, but I did it and I'm gonna summarize it right here. There's some real interesting relationships between the gallbladder and your thyroid. And uh, unfortunately, this is the type of thing that your doctor should be telling you. So let's first start out talking about what is bile. Bile is composed of many things. You first of all have bile salts in the bile, and that's made out of potassium, sodium, calcium. Bicarbonates are like a compound that is alkaline, and it's also made out of chlorides. So 67% of bile is bile salts. But then you also have something else in bile salts, and that's called lecithin. So 22% of bile is made out of lecithin. And lecithin is a choline compound that helps you break down fat and cholesterol. So bile is made out of bile salts, lecithin, which has choline in it. Also bile is made up of cholesterol. And that's really how bile salts are created from cholesterol. And if there's too much cholesterol and not enough bile salts, that's when you get gallstones. So we have the cholesterol. We also have bilirubin, which is like the end product of red blood cells. And you have a little bit of protein in there. Now the protein is mainly two amino acids that combine with this bile to allow it to be water soluble and transported through the body. Okay. So that term is called conjugated. Okay. So that allows it to travel through the body in a very similar way to cholesterol being attached to a protein. That's why they called it a lipoprotein to be transported through the blood. And then as these bile salts travel through the um, intestine, um, bacteria take the amino acids away and then they unconjugate it. And then now it's allowed to be recycled. And so one of the really important uh, purposes of the liver is to make bile. And bile is the primary mode of cholesterol elimination. And also uh, a lot of the drugs and chemicals and toxins are eliminated uh, with the help of this bile. And of course, bile has another purpose of helping you break down fats and helping in the absorption of vitamin A, D, E, and K, omega-3 fatty acids. Very, very, very important. And one point about this cholesterol, the majority of cholesterol in the body is actually made by your own body. Um, you have dietary cholesterol, which is about 25%, but 75% of the cholesterol is made by your own body. And this cholesterol is really necessary to help you make bile, to help you make hormones, especially like estrogen, progesterone, and even the stress hormone called cortisol. Also you make vitamin D from cholesterol. So cholesterol is really, really important. Now what's interesting about the thyroid is when the thyroid is low, you have this hypothyroid condition. And even if it's subclinical, so it's not like a major problem, it's a smaller problem that is going into the direction of a full-blown hypothyroid situation. The person has a susceptibility of developing stones. And when someone is treated with thyroid hormones, okay, T4, for example, a lot of times these stones go away. So the more thyroid hormones you have, the less you're at risk for developing stones. So that's one interesting relationship. Also, when the thyroid is sluggish, as in hypothyroidism, the production of bile salts goes down. And so if you're not making the bile salts, guess what you're going to get? Gallstones. Also, without enough thyroid hormones, the metabolism of cholesterol is diminished. Here you are having all this cholesterol in the body, but it's not really broken down. It's not metabolized. You can't really use it. The receptors for LDL don't even actually work. So you get the situation where you're getting a buildup of more cholesterol without the bile to break it down. And so again, we have another risk of getting gallstones because we're getting more cholesterol. The body can't use it without the bile salts. So you have this super saturated cholesterol stone that's developing. Also your bile ducts won't be able to relax if the thyroid hormones are sluggish. So in a hypothyroid case, you can develop stones in the ducts because they're kind of more constricted or you can develop stones in the gallbladder itself. 
And then there's another connection. If the thyroid is sluggish, you're going to be on the cold side. And if the temperature in your body is too cold, guess what? The enzymes don't work anymore. So now the enzymes in the pancreas are not going to help you break down this fat. The activation of the enzymes in the liver are not going to be that great, as well as the formation of bile. All right. So we have that connection, right? We have this hypothyroid problem that can create stones, right? Now on the flip side, bile salts help in the conversion of T4 to T3 to actually activate the thyroid hormones. You see, T4 is the inactive version of the thyroid hormone. T3 is the active version. To help this conversion, uh, bile is needed. So you may have a lot of thyroid hormone like T4, but you can also experience the symptoms of a hypothyroid because they're not being activated. So we have two problems. One is, are you producing enough thyroid hormone or is the problem the conversion? Okay, so you have to differentiate which is which. It takes a really healthy thyroid to make good bile, but it also takes bile to actually create a healthy thyroid. So one big common problem, probably the most common problem with a hypothyroid situation is that the person has an autoimmune type hypothyroid situation. It's called Hashimoto's. In that case, there's a completely different mechanism. It's not really a thyroid problem per se. It's an immune problem that's attacking the thyroid. So you have antibodies. And I actually have a really good protocol and I will put that link down below if you have Hashimoto's. 90% of everyone with hypothyroidism has um, a Hashimoto's, okay? And for that, you definitely need to avoid gluten and grains for sure. Another common cause of thyroid problems is a high level of cortisol. It's adrenal stress and that can shut down the thyroid. So the thyroid is secondary, the adrenal is primary. And a couple of reasons for that, it could be stress, or let's say you're menopausal, right? And you're going through uh, this transition where your adrenals are backing up the ovaries. And let's say you're on a low fat, low cholesterol diet. Well, your adrenal hormones like cortisol and other hormones like estrogen and progesterone are made out of cholesterol. So if you are on a low fat diet or a plant-based diet, you're not gonna get enough cholesterol. And that could be the very reason why the adrenals tank down and the thyroid goes down because you don't have the raw material to make these hormones. Just by supplying more fat, going on a healthy version of the ketogenic diet can supply the raw material to start making more adrenal hormones that can then reduce the cortisol situation and give relief to your thyroid. And remember, it takes cholesterol to make bile. So being on a low-fat diet or a low-cholesterol diet can cause you not to even make enough bile to not activate the thyroid hormones. So we need that cholesterol. Also, what activates the production of bile is fat in the diet, animal fats. So if you're not having enough animal fats, you just don't make enough bile. Well, that right there can increase your risk of gallstones as well as your risk of getting a hypothyroid situation because one, we don't feed the adrenal hormones, okay? So then we get higher cortisol and we don't make enough bile to make the conversion from T4 to T3. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things going on. There's some complexities, but I wanted you to understand some of these important connections so you can have a light bulb go off and make some changes because I think it's really important to just look at all these factors and figure out what the real problem is instead of just being on your medication for the rest of your life and not really ever coming off of it. There's a couple other reasons for hypothyroidism. One is you don't have enough selenium in the diet. You don't have enough iodine in the diet and your estrogen might be too high. So to help you sort out more of really what's causing your thyroid problem in the first place, you might want to check this video out right here.